Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. This is a Westwood W11, although it's a bit of a strange one because it looks just like a T1100 which succeeded the Gazelles. A W11 is a Gazelle. Uh, so yeah, it was sort of in the transition phase. It's also not in very good condition. So I want to see today if I can get it running. Now I know absolutely nothing about it. The cutting deck doesn't look very good. It looks very rusty. You can see there that was manufactured in 1985. It's a 36 inch cut. Let's go into the bonnet. This should be another sticker, there we go. 1985 W11. So it really is a W11, not a T1100. A T1100 would have a decal here. And here is the engine, 400 cc cast iron bore. So that should be a good engine. Yes, that's uh, going to need some attention. The gear shifting stick has disappeared. It's actually snapped off. So clearly not been used for many years. Fitted with a five speed peerless gearbox, which are usually very good. Oh yeah, and the steering does nothing at all. Seized up. So let's get it in the workshop and see what we can do with it. Before I bring it inside, I'm just going to take the deck off, we'll have a look under there, see how bad it really is, but it doesn't look great. Well, the snails seem to like it. Shells are everywhere. Absolutely full of snail shells. Right, so will it turn? Wow, that's uh, surprising. I think he's getting caught on the blades underneath. This is the brake arm, which kind of works. Uh, the brake pads have got some life in them, not too much. All plastic mixed in with all the snail shells, very strange. I think there's probably been a rat in here. It's been bringing things in for its nest. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get it all cleaned off. Well, that's the majority of the snails removed, there are still a few shells in there. More importantly, it is uh, the majority of the plastic removed. It's either had a load of old plastic bags left on it which have deteriorated and then distributed themselves over the surface, or, yeah, some kind of rodent has been uh, collecting the bits and bringing them in. Okay, so looking at the underside, you can see that somebody has cut all the way around both of the bearing houses. Uh, the reason for this, I think, is because, well, it was a big problem. The two bearing housing halves did used to get stuck, and if they did, it was a huge problem because it sam they sandwich the deck shell. So, yeah, you can either sort of just cut them out of there like this, or you can hammer away and try and force them out of there. Both methods are not great. Uh, so, yes, it is just a huge nightmare, but clearly this has kind of worked uh, because somebody has managed to get the old one out and then repair it and then fit a new plate and uh, yeah the bearing the bearings on this side are not terrible that is definitely usable because I'm hoping to actually run this deck just to see what it can do if I can get the engine running and oh this side's moving now uh, it was probably touching the floor then the blade was likely sitting on the floor yeah, so both sides actually do seem very good. Which is a nice thing because I think really we're going to be focusing more on the tractor because that really doesn't look too good. 
Well, this doesn't look too good, but you know what I mean. Mechanically, it looks like it's had a bit of work done. And as for the belt, it's not great, it's not terrible. It's certainly usable. So yeah, with a bit of luck, I can show a bit of mowing at the end of this video if the engine and the gearbox work. Okay, I think the main issue is gonna be the engine. It's leaking oil, it keeps dripping. Uh, it's probably coming from the sump, it looks like it's coming from the sump. As for the gearbox, we will have a quick look at it, but they're usually very good, so there really shouldn't be any issues there. So really, I think, to make this easier, if this engine will come out, I would try and take it out. I don't know how well it picks up on camera, but there's an awful lot of oil here around the sump. I don't think it's coming from the carburetor, although it is still very wet here. I think that's probably the fuel line that's leaking, or maybe the fuel tap. So there are several things to look at, and of course this is an engine with an integrated fuel tank, it's not got the tank up in the console. Uh, looking at this again, it might be coming from the valve cover gasket. If it is, then that's great, because that's going to be very easy compared to taking the sump off. Uh, in which case, in fact, we don't even need to take the engine out, so that'd be really good. And just very quickly, I know I do a great deal of talking in these videos. I always feel there's a great deal to explain. Um, but also, yes, if you don't like the talking videos, then please do stick to my restoration videos. And I also get a lot of comments on this style of video, a will it run style video, um, saying, oh, I thought you were going to restore it. If it doesn't say restoration in the title, it's not a restoration. So just making that clear. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think... Um, Hopefully, we won't have to remove the engine. Let's get this air box off, and we'll take a look at the carburetor. Obviously, the fuel line needs to be changed. The muffler seems okay. Yeah, I think that's probably seen better days. It's like a sponge cake. Anyone for a slice? I wouldn't be offended if you said no. I would like to restore this machine, but there just looks to be too many issues currently. I'd have to source some fairly rare spare parts. Uh, for example, the gear shifter, that stick there, it's made out of aluminium. It probably could weld it, but I don't know how messy it would look. Um, but it's a very different design to all of the other Westwoods. It's a single piece that goes all the way down into the chassis. Okay, so that's looking fairly clean, really. It does not look too bad. As these videos get quite long, I've decided to cut out things which aren't really that necessary, like checking the oil and showing you the fuel. Basically the fuel tank is empty, there's a few bits in there, and the oil is uh, below the minimum mark, but it does have oil in it. Okay, so that's given us access to the carburetor. There's some leaves in here, sometimes you get a mouse nest in here. Definitely leaking from this tap. But yeah, I'm really hopeful that the oil is coming from the valve cover. I'll just get this engine recoil cover out of the way because it's just going to be uh, blocking our view. It's going to have to come off anyway because clearly it's not recoiling. Ah. So that's what you call a nest, and it's eaten through the HT lead. I probably should have expected this after seeing the deck. I'm convinced that was a, a rat that had ripped all that plastic to shreds. We've got some bits of black bin liner in here as well. Always worth wearing gloves as well if you're gonna to be touching anything like this. Um, and yeah, it's eaten all the way through the HT lead, showing the core. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not gonna be good. I might have a used one a used coil laying around, I'll have to have a look. Uh, but this this is actually quite surprising to me in the UK, because I don't really see many mouse nests inside the engine covers. I know it happens a lot in the USA and places like that, but uh, probably in the hundreds that I've worked on, I've probably only seen about four uh, with mouse nests in them. So yeah, it's a little bit more unusual, but it does happen. I 
I've just been taking a closer look at the recoil and it seems to be fine. The issue is actually with the starter clutch just up here. It's worn out. It's actually worn down the top piece. So that needs to be replaced. You have other used ones lying around, so I'll just fit one of those. But I think before I go any further, it is going to be wise to take a look in the bore. It does have a cast iron sleeve, so that's always a very promising uh, sign when you come across one of these. The cool bore engines, or the aluminium bore engines, are more likely to have uh, issues like scoring, deep scratches, and also, yeah, with more light uh, coming through because of the air box being removed, uh, it looks more like this oil leak is coming from the sump, which is not good. Anyway, there is the spark plug. It does look quite oily. So the next thing to do is to look into the bore. And because it is a flathead, I'm going to use the camera which looks at a right angle. So there's a valve. There's another valve. That is the piston head just there. So quite a bit of carbon. I can see a little bit of rust, nothing too serious. But what I need to do is I need to move the piston back. So that's going forwards, there we go. And you can see the bore is now being revealed. I can see some oil down at the bottom there. Not a huge amount, but it does look quite clean. And although, yes, it's not the best view ever, I can't see any scratches or any damage. Yes, I don't think it looks too bad in there, really. Uh, the oil has probably just seeped past the rings. It's been stood for a long time. But until I actually run it, we're not gonna know for sure if it is an oil burner. The smoke really should disappear within five to 10 minutes. So um, yeah, next up, I need to take the carburetor off and then I can really find the source of the leak, but it is looking highly likely that it is coming from the sump, which is uh, not a major issue, but it is a major issue if the poly block on the underside of this is stuck on, because I won't be able to remove the sump. I'll be rebuilding the carburetor later, but first of all, let's just get to the bottom of this oil leak. So this is the valve cover, and that seems dry. It's leaking fast too, it's dripping on the ground, uh, well, every, well, it's a drip every 10 minutes. It doesn't sound very fast, but it certainly adds up. Very wet on the side. So it looks like it is coming from this sump gasket. As I said, the poly block gets stuck pretty easily on these. So I might not be able to get it out, but hopefully I can do. And then I can remove the sump, clean the sump out, because there's always loads of sludge in there, and put a new gasket on, and then that will hopefully eliminate the oil leak. Well, it was incredible, it just came straight off. It might have been removed before, but it's also full of oil. So our leak has actually made the job easier. Although if it wasn't for the leak, it wouldn't have been coming off. Since we're under the machine, let's just have a very quick tour. So there is the engine crank shaft just there, obviously, and then we've got the two idler pulleys, that's for the clutch. So when you press the pedal in, those two there will detension the belt. There is a sensor just up there with the spring. This rod here 
is our gear shifting rod which runs to the gearbox and the gearbox is just lurking in the back there with the orange pulley and surrounding it is this huge deflector guard so the grass doesn't damage the gearbox and block it up but overall it is actually looking quite good under here I think one of these that one's usable yeah that one is going to need to be replaced with another used one. Oh, and of course the belt yes I had to cut that off because it was uh, <laughs> destroyed but it was the wrong belt anyway it wasn't even fitted correctly this thing is just falling to pieces so yeah it was no good it had to be changed I think this engine is pretty good it just needs to have a few little things sorted out obviously I replace that and sort the leak do the carburetor and I don't really see any reason why it won't run take a look in here. You can see the sump is full of the usual sludge. Um, I think the gasket was probably leaking from around here. Yes, that would be where it was. And you can see it's not really uh, as intact as it is in other areas. Obviously when we've pulled this off it's uh, broken in more but uh, it does seem that that would be the likely spot. So whilst I've got this off I'm going to clean it all, get rid of all this sludge. Also I should have a new seal. So I've put a new seal in, make it all nice and clean. But let's just take a look inside the engine properly. For anybody who has been following my channel for a while will know that I just like to rebuild these engines whatever the condition appears to be like this, I would rebuild it anyway if it's a restoration. Because uh, you never really know, there could be worn rings, it could have a scored bore, there could be scoring on the uh, connecting rod or on the crankshaft, there could be other underlying issues like an issue with the synchro balancer for example. Uh, so yeah, obviously I'm not going to go to that extent today because this is just a quick fix up video just to see if this will work but it, it does look to be um, okay. The biggest problem is the gasket because when you're not rebuilding you've got to be very careful not to drop bits of the gasket inside uh, which is again another reason why I prefer to rebuild them fully because you can just clean this up when it's all fully disassembled and if a bit goes inside it doesn't matter because it's going to be cleaned again anyway plus it's very easy to clean. So I'm going to, I'm going to clean this remove all the uh, the gasket here and then we can uh, fit a new seal, a new gasket, a main sump gasket and then reinstall the sump. Hopefully that will have eliminated the leaking issue. Oh, also very quickly I'll just show you that we've got the correct timing. The two timing marks are aligned so that's good. The oil slinger or the governor here is functioning correctly. These weights are nicely connected. That's all good. And I've actually had one in the past where this Governor Lever had snapped off. This piece had had broken off here and fallen inside the engine, which is no good. The engine would run uncontrollably. So anyway, that's that's all good on this engine, so that's fine. I can see the uh, connecting rod bolts have not started to undo themselves. That's all good because they have locking tabs. There are no obvious issues. I can see the cam lobes and they're still good. They're not rounded off. The heated pass washer did a pretty good job of cleaning the sump. Sometimes it can be really stuck in here. If that is the case then I use solvent. 
like white spirits. Um, but yeah, that is good enough. You probably could get away with reusing this seal, but I'm just gonna change it just because, well, it's good practice to change it and I really don't want it leaking everywhere. I will also put some ultra slick Permatex assembly lube in here. I just don't want anything to start up without any lubrication on it because that will not be good. Here's the gasket, I've just put some high tack on it. It's the Permatex high tack gasket sealant, just to guarantee that it does seal correctly. It's a little bit tricky with the starter motor on, but it is possible. And actually, I think that starter motor is gonna to have to be removed at some point, because it does need a new starter gear, I've just noticed. I noticed after I'd already removed the sump. Okay, and I'll put some high tack on that side. And that just needs to be left for a few minutes for it to go tackier. And then the sump can be fitted. Now sometimes you're lucky and it just goes straight on, like this time. Other times you do have to turn the crankshaft ever so slightly just for things to mesh together and for it to fit. Don't put the bolts in and then try and uh, force the uh, sump on. Now for the bolts. I have just cleaned them but they are quite rusty. And these will have to be torqued to the correct torque setting. Right, I've just put the engine back onto the chassis, but it's not bolted on, so I could just lift it off again if I need to. Uh, I'm gonna be moving onto the carburetor now because I find that to be a very essential part of this overall project um, and then once that is done I can come back and clean the fuel tank, I can change the coil, uh, do a few other things like change the seal on the dipstick, the fuel line, all that sort of stuff and then, oh and of course the clutch, the starter clutch, yeah once that is all done hopefully it will run and if we're very lucky it will drive. I have just put a, a temporary wheel on just over there because the other one was uh, no good here it is, looking very grimy. Looks disgusting in there. So I'm not really expecting much from this. I would not be surprised if it's gonna have to be uh, replaced with another used one, but I'll do my best. So first of all, let's just remove the bowl. Possibly, if I can do. This is a first, I've never had to do this before. I'm gonna to have to use an impact wrench on the bowl nut. I don't recommend doing this. But that is just so stuck. Let's see if I can find out why. I believe it is just corrosion. Okay, so we've got a lot of disgusting sediment in here, a little bit of rust. Not too much rust though, surprisingly uh, good for that. The float is sitting level. 
Looks like it might be functioning. Seems good. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the float itself. That will reveal the needle valve, which also looks quite clean, surprisingly. Okay, so now we have the main jet. Unsurprisingly, it is stuck in there. Just using a bit of lubricating oil. So I'm using the uh, genuine screwdriver, which would normally work, part number 19062. But if it gets very stuck, then yes, it's, uh, it can still round it off. So I think if it doesn't move on this next attempt, I'm gonna use an oversized screwdriver, basically just a, a large screwdriver, larger than this one. I've gone for this screwdriver, which is an upgrade for surface area over this one. It's also a little bit thicker, but I really do not hold out much hope because this is bad. Whenever I've had them this bad in the past, it's not ended well. So I'm putting down pressure on it whilst turning. And nope. Yeah, not looking good. I think the thread is just all gummed up. It's acting as a thread locker, basically just locking the thing in there. So I'm going to have to try and extract it because clearly using a flathead screwdriver is not going to be effective. That was amazingly stubborn. So I did manage to extract it, sort of successfully in the end. The first extractor broke, that's how stuck it was. Uh, just goes to show that those screwdrivers had no chance at all of removing it. The second extractor got it. Um, that was a big extractor, and because it's also paper thin and pitted, uh, it did put a hairline crack in this casting. I've just JB welded it. Uh, it really was shocking in the first place, but yeah, I've tried to improve it a bit. It still looks terrible, but it's going to be good enough. It's going to be good enough to use just to test on this engine, it'd be very interesting to see. So yes, I've uh, still got some of the original parts, obviously. Just remove that. I had to remove that so I could uh, actually put the extractor in, otherwise it would have broken it. Uh, it's very gummed up, this nozzle. Just try and show you a close up. Yeah, a lot of gumminess. Just, and a cat hair. Um, yeah, just very, uh, Unpleasant ready. It would never have run. All of these nozzles are very blocked. Um, the, obviously the initial one is going to have to be replaced because that's been destroyed. But that's fine. I do have a carb rebo kit. Didn't really want to use it because obviously it's not a great body here. Um, it would be better to use this on a, a decent one. But I do have some new parts. So I've got the nozzle, different screws, spring, valve, all that sort of stuff. So it's gonna be very handy to have. And that is the washer, which you fit onto the bowl nut. Okay, so I have given everything a quick clean, but it does need to have uh, an even more thorough clean. I've got another screw to remove just here. So I'll just remove that. There we go. So you can see, very gummy. This is our adjustment screw. I'll just replace it, I might as well. It comes in the kit. So, we also have a bowl gasket in there. I'm just gonna get a pick, just try and pick that out of there. Again, I do have replacements. I don't think this one would have been any good. C1 
seems very perished. Just trying to run around it instead of digging in. Don't want to be digging in, although I don't think for the bowl gasket it's going to be the end of the world if I was to dig in slightly. Not quite as crucial as the gaskets on the sump of an engine, for example. Okay. Just remove some of those little bits. There we go. That's the bowl gasket removed. Very, very brittle. So it'd be good to get that out of the way. So yeah, I'm gonna just uh, squirt through these passages with some carburetor cleaner. I would say clean the nozzle. And then I can uh, clean the bowl. I think the best way to clean this bowl is gonna be just a sandblaster. Just very quickly put it in the sandblaster and tidy it up a bit. The float, I believe, is still good. It just needs to be cleaned. Don't think it's perforated. Doesn't seem to have any liquid in it. That's good. Uh, the pin can be replaced. We're almost there, as you've just seen, I've just installed the new needle valve seat, just in there. I've cleaned the bowl, just sandblasted that. I did do the exterior as well, uh, so I'm going to give that a quick coat of paint once it's been reassembled. But yeah, next thing to do is to put the bowl gaskets on. Okay, and then the float, the new pin, and the needle valve. And I just need to check to make sure the float is level, which it is. And then we have the bowl, the bowl nut, and the adjustment screw, and of course the washer. And that will never be as tight as it was before. Oh yeah, I must just point out, make sure that is actually out, that screw, don't want to destroy it. And then I need to set it. So all the way in without forcing it. Half turn, half turn, and a third half turn. So there we go, one and a half turns out. And that is our starting point. It might still need to be adjusted, but that is the starting point. Okay, there was a fuel tap just there, which is just here. They tend to leak. So I have sourced just an old elbow. These can leak as well. Could also use some petrol resistant PTFE tape. And there we have it. 
not certainly not pretty but it should work hopefully so we'll just paint the bowl uh, leave it to dry overnight and then it can be fitted in the morning the following morning and that is looking much better at least the bowl is so I'm not going to fit it just yet I'm going to work on the rest of the engine get everything sorted over there and then we can fit this at the end just before I uh, test to see if the engine will run. I've just found another used core which I know works, I've cleaned it up a bit uh, just to make it look a bit better. So that one can come off in just a minute. First of all we've got the fuel tank that needs to come off. So it should have two of these uh, clamps that hold the fuel tank on but it looks like it's lost one of them. Also sometimes the square nut on the other side can spin just using some long nose pliers to hold that in place okay so we've still got the fuel line attached just going around the front there it's a very grimy fuel line not very pleasant and look at that that starter motor gear is absolutely shredded to bits so that needs to be changed it's a very nasty old fuel line okay so here's the tank the inside of it is not terrible it's gonna be quite hard to see on camera there we go so you can see we've got some stale fuel which has gone all gummy as usual and it's a bit of dust and dirt in there a bit of grit just needs to be dried and I can blow it out with the airline this is also a great time to fit a brand new dipstick seal because they usually leak so first of all I turn it anti-clockwise to get it into the thread and then very simply clockwise finger tight there we go and that should not leak this coil possibly would work but since I have other ones it just makes sense to change it you could use electrical tape over that not that I'd advise it but in a situation like this if you're just trying to see if something will run I guess you could do but yeah um, I would say don't these things are not that expensive Okay, and we should have the wire. Before I change that starter gear, I'm just going to make sure the starter motor actually works. Uh, it might be quite loud because that is still catching even though it's really stripped off. Yeah, as suspected. It's quite a squeal. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, it is just, we can see all the pieces of plastic shredding off. So I'll take that roll pin out of there and I'll uh, lift this old gear off and put a new one on.
Nice and simple, that is the starter motor fixed and it does seem to be very powerful, seems to work absolutely no problem at all. So that is great. Next we're going to blow out the fuel tank and then I need to work on the starter recoil clutch. Thing is with the starter recoil clutch it doesn't really need to be done because I'm not going to use it as the starter motor works but I think yes it would not seem right to do this video without fixing it um, because then in the future if I wanted to use it then it would be there as a backup. So I'll get that removed and yeah once that is done I have a new breather hose to fit but I'll do that when I do the carburetor. I'll sort out the fuel line which runs from the tank to the carburetor once I've got the carburetor fitted. For now, let's take a look at this starter recoil clutch. Okay, so the clutch has come off but the washer underneath has broken, they usually do. They're nearly always fractured when you take them off these old engines. I do have replacements. It's just like a domed spring washer. Usually they do just have a hairline fracture, they don't actually break in half. The top of the crankshaft looks to be very dry, very rusty. So I will just clean it up once I have done the clutch. Now I know I did say I was just going to replace this with another used one, but I'd much prefer to clean this one up. It looks like we do have some wear in the top, um, but yeah, I think it will be usable. So here's the tricky part. As you can see, we have rust in here. It looks quite damp. It just wants to be nice and dry and clean. So we've got little ball bearings, got a washer. There we go. So I'll clean that up along with the ball bearings. I will sandblast this top plate. In fact, I'll sandblast everything just to make it all nice and clean. I'll take this seal out. So that should clean up quite easily. I'll clean that with white spirit and we should have, if it's still in there, a piece of felt which you would oil. No, oh, okay. There is indeed a piece of felt but it seems to be half the size it should be. And there is nothing else in there. I think it's shrunk quite a bit. Um, well, it shouldn't be a major problem, but it's obviously not right. Uh, obviously, yeah, ideally, this should just be replaced. Need to make it really clear. This is a will it run, just using what I've got, unless, of course, something is beyond repair. Ready for reassembly. So everything has cleaned up very well. I'll just put a piece of felt back into there. It should really be replaced. But yes, I don't have any uh, spare ones at the moment. So just put the washer back in. And then we have the ratcheting parts, which is the only part with actual damage. We have the ball bearings. And finally we have the top cover with the seal. So as you can see that is functioning. It's designed to obviously ratchet and lock 
in one direction. Choke linkage that just slots into there, and there is also the breather hose that just plugs into the back. The intake gasket is still good, so I can uh, keep that one. And then we have three bolts to hold this assembly on. I'll be putting all three in very loosely first. I'm not going to tighten any until they're all in. And if you're new to my channel, please do check out my restorations. I like to think that after each one that I do, I gain more experience and they gradually get better. But I'll let you be the judge of that. Okay, so that's that one in loosely as well. And then there is this support just down here. And there we have it, the car pressure is fitted. So next we have the air box. Got a new lid gasket under here. And the air box that will just slot in there. The air cartridge. And there we go. Just got to put the fuel line on and put a new spark plug in. I tend to use non-genuine fuel line for these test videos. If I'm just testing an engine, even if I'm not doing a video, the non-genuine is fine. But on all my restoration products, I nearly always, unless it's not available, uh, use genuine parts. Just the genuine fuel line, I think just a couple of meters, maybe a bit more. Um, that's about 55 pounds. So it's not cheap. Okay, so there we go. The fuel line is sorted. So what I'm gonna do now is refit the engine, put the bolts through, uh, put the crankshaft pulley back on, put a new belt on, go into the gearbox, and then put a new spark plug in. I think after that I can then check the electrics. The electrics don't look great, but it might just be because of all the uh, corrosion. So, hope for the best, but if the worst comes to the worst, I can just use the jump pack and uh, start it directly on the starter motor. So I'll get that done, and yeah, we can uh, hopefully put some oil and fuel in it soon. I'm really starting to get there now. I've just been looking at the electrics. I've put some new terminals on because the old ones had had it. And yeah, nothing. Nothing on the dashboard except for a splat of poop. So I, I've looked at the wiring. It looks really corroded. So I don't think there's gonna be much luck with that. Um, I've set the governor so to make sure that's all good. Uh, also done all the work underneath. I'll do my best to show you. So I've put the pulley on. We've got a brand new belt. I've replaced one of those jockey pulleys with another good use one. This one at the back here is the replacement. And then moving further back we have where the belt attaches to the gearbox. It is quite difficult to get the camera in. So that is ready for a test drive if the engine works and of course if the gearbox works. So next up oil and petrol. And yeah, because the wiring is terrible, I'm gonna to have to use a jump pack. I 
Okay, will it run? Well, it runs, and the headlights do work. But the big question is, will it drive? I'm using some vice grips. They do keep falling off, but <laughs> we'll see how we go. That should be gear one. Very promising. Try gear three or four. Okay, let's go for gear five. Very good. Okay, what about reverse? Ah, my gear stick. We have reverse as well. Very good. Time to get the deck. After running it for a few minutes there, you can see that it performed pretty well. No oil leaks, and it looks like the carburetor doesn't even need an adjustment. So I'll just do a close up and show you where it was leaking from before. Just there. So it is totally dry. And that that you see just there is actually lubricating oil because that's lubricating the throttle control. So it looks to be leak free. And the car brusher amazingly has turned out pretty well. I know I haven't actually mentioned the steering. It was totally locked up before. It does not have grease nipples which is interesting because the newer ones do and also the older ones do the ones older than this but this one doesn't for some reason so I just managed to get a load of penetrating oil down there and it's freed it off nicely that is the deck attached okay so I'm going to start it up shouldn't be any problems be interesting to see how it performs and then I do have some grass to go and cut obviously the blades are old not sharpened so it's not going to be that good but just going to slash down a few weeds anyway I'm going to leave the commentary here thank you so much for watching and hopefully you'll join me in the next video.